the topic of assemblies or how to assemble imported geometry into Fusion 360, particularly when it contains already contains sub-assemblies and is not just a single component, comes up regularly on the Fusion 360 form, so I thought I made a I'm gonna make a little tutorial about this. And when you import geometry that may be originating in SolidWorks, Solid Edge, Inventor, usually you have to import it. It's, it comes in in some generic file format. It's not Fusion, Fusion 360 native. And what that means is that Fusion 360 automatically defaults to direct modeling mode, meaning you don't have a timeline or history recorded down here that you can, that you can see. And uh, in that mode, you cannot drag parts around like you can in, uh, in history recording mode. You can pick a component. If it's not assembled to anything, you can pick a component and just drag it around in the viewport. But in direct modeling mode, you can't do it. You can move it by double-clicking on the component and move it with a move command, but we don't want to do that right now. Um, so the temptation is, of course, you know, you want to assemble those components. Is The temptation is to just select everything in the browser and rigid group it. And then, because you can't move it, the assumption is, okay, that, that worked. Now I can go ahead and take this, save it, and take this and assemble that into my other assembly file. And that usually goes wrong. And the reason for that is you actually didn't join anything. And we can easily see that if we now turn the design history on, uh, it shows us that we have all these base components, those represent our geometry, and then we have that joint that we just created, and that's part of the base geometry we, uh, because we created it before we turned the design history on. And if we do this now, we can see, oh, now we can move all this around, and we don't really want to be able to do so. So that means that rigid joint actually didn't work. So why did it not work? Um, let's delete it because we really don't need it. Oops. Oh, I want to get rid of you. There you go. Okay, now it's gone. So, okay, we can pull this part of these parts around. So how do we actually join these parts? So one reason why this didn't work, there is actually a little, little uh, bug in Fusion 360 right now. If you, if you pick two sub-assemblies um, and hit rigid group, then there's this little checkbox that suggests, if it's checkmarked, that the rigid joint includes all the components and that you shouldn't be able to pull those apart. But that's really not true. Uh, and that's part that, actually, that part doesn't actually work right now. So delete this. Um, so, can we work around this? Yes, we can work around that. So what I usually do, I, I open one of those sub-assemblies, select everything in that sub-assembly, every component, and rigid group that. Okay, that works, and it works for this one as well because it's an identical component. Uh, it was copied and pasted. So we got this one, we don't have this one, and we're going to select that and rigid group this, okay, so now we have that, then we're going to take this base component, take those, that screw, take that screw, take this name, oops, command key. Take this name plate, take this name plate, take that group, this name plate, and that screw, and the center jaw assembly, and rigid group that. And then we have all that. Oops, I must have forgotten to pick something. Yes, of course, I made the same mistake, which is easy to make. Instead of picking a component in the center jaw assembly, I picked the assembly, and that doesn't work. So let's do this again. I'll delete this one. So let's do this again. I pick the nameplate, the screw, the bottom part, another nameplate. I pick the center jaw in the center jaw assembly and I add this screw and then I add the rigid group. 
okay yes okay so now that moves as a complete unit great so in, th in theory what you could do now is you could apply some sliding joints to these uh, to these side jaws but for the purpose of this demonstration we're not going to do that I'm just going to not make the same mistake again hopefully I'm going to pick a part in here I'm going to pick a part in here I'm going to pick this body here and I'm going to rigid join those repeat rigid group okay so now that whole thing is one assembled unit what I then tend to do and let's find where there's a there's the joint origin. What I then tend to do is cancel. No, I don't want to join it. I want to align it first. Center point, joint origin. So and now it's aligned to that center point, to the origin, if we turn this on. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pick a component. And ground that component. Capture position. Okay, so now that component is grounded and it doesn't move around on us. Great. So that concludes this assembly. Let's save this. And insert it into an assembly. Insert into current design. Just accept that. So we still can move it around. Sometimes you don't want to move it around. And the idea is, of course, you right click on it and you ground it. Again, this doesn't work. Fusion 360 works like things more or less, or its intention is to work like things in the real world. You can't ground a whole assembly. You can ground one particular part that everything else is attached to, so it can move all around. But you can't group a whole group of parts. It, in the, in the physical world, that doesn't make any difference. So that you could ground a particular part of it, just that screw, you can ground that one, and then nothing else moves because everything else is already assembled. So let's, uh, let's unground that. Unground. So now with this fully assembled, you can actually pick the part and just go ahead and capture position and apply a regular joint Let's give that a revolute joint, and this works perfectly. Another thing, and I'm going to go over that in another little tutorial, before you save that assembly file, if you really don't need a link component, and in this case, it's a purchase part, you really don't need a link component, break the link and do so before you save your assembly file. So now that we've um, Join this vise to the to the table here. You may wonder. So, how about the origin of this of this vise? Uh, you remember that initially in this before we inserted it into the assembly file, we actually aligned it with the origin, and then we grounded the part here. Um, and then we inserted it, and uh, as you can see, there is now grounding symbol here. That's gone. Um, and looking at the origin. It's not aligned with the part anymore. And that's what happens well, when you do something wrong then, because that grounding doesn't help you. So what you actually should be doing, and we could do this here right now, but you can, you can also still, that, do, still do that uh, while you have the part assembled. Let's activate the part and unisolate it. Hmm. Let's activate the part isolate and isolate the part so we just see what we need what I tend to do or what you need to do is basically you need to join the part to the origin but because I haven't actually found a way to modify the orientation of this origin and the part would flip on me actually the coordinate system would flip on me what I tend to do is I just pick a joint origin 
and the joint origin actually lets me redefine its its uh, look its orientation there it does and then I'm just simply I'm turning this the origin off and then I simply assemble the part to that origin okay so now we turn out our origin it's correctly attached to the part and aligned with it which is exactly what we want so there you have it I hope this uh, this helps to clarify a few issues with inserting assemblies into Fusion 360